Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to be continuing with the 7-3 antennas um, cobweb. keep getting all these spider things mixed up. There's also a movie out about some spider guy. Anyway, the, this is over here, uh, the cobweb, which we got completely assembled. And then a deer came and hit the outside wire. Did not snap the wire, but sure busted the springs around. I found this one spring right here that's kind of uh, all curly Q because uh, of the way it went. So I've got some pliers here. Also, there's a bunch of spare parts that came with uh, the unit. So uh, I've got spring in here and so on. What well, we're in need of are a couple springs. So let's go and fix it. Okay, what we're going to do, just hold that for a minute. Um, we're going to put this back around this thing, which got pulled off when the deer hit it. These are lineman's pliers. And what I need to do is wrap this end of the spring back around that thing and crimp that back on and see if we can do this. The problem is this is spring steel and once it has sprung it tends to stay sprung. work but we're getting closer okay now I'm going to try the other tool okay we're going to pick this up right here and we're going to try to get this around here right there. see like that and we're going to now I'm going to bend this up around that. I'd like this to stay on by itself, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to. Oh well. The idea of the little black thing is that it's an insulator between the antenna wire and the mounting here and that is just not going to do it now let's see what we can do if we pull this tight maybe that'll just stay in place wow that's been out quite a bit let's try this one out now this one has the little thing in it but the problem is that I can't slip this over the wire well, I wish I could keep my tools out where I could see them. Let's take a look at how this is constructed. That is actually bent all the way over there. Okay. What we're going to have to do here. That looks about right. So we'll put that in here. Now the problem here you'll notice it's not tight. And it's not tight because we've got that one spring that's really stretched out. Oh, 
close that. Yes. I want that to come out more. So we have one more spare spring. There. I'm gonna take that. It's a little deep. Okay. And we will ignore that one. Take this spring out. Now we want to get this one. You know, this is like on the airplane. I had to replace the antenna on the thing because when they did the annual, they, oops, they checked the bolts on the antenna and in the process loosened them. And so I had to replace the antenna. The problem was the antenna held, had to be held upside down against the bottom of the airplane. Almost. There. There. There we are. Okay, so if you'll just bring the thing over here. for it you know like if you're looking for a place to put a baby so that it won't fall on the floor best place to put it is on the floor because a baby can't fall off the floor so that's the same with these masks as much for it Oh, that reminds me of something I wanted to show you. We'll just leave him out here for about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Funny, he says. I know this is supposed to be done by hand, but I actually want it tight. Just on his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So that way he's taking it. So okay. You not want to pull out, now let me show you the problem we've got here on this side. This won't go all the way up. This is a, a connecting point to another piece. So we're just going to make this as tight as we can. It's going to make the pole a little bit quicker. By the way, you can set that down right there.
Okay. Okay, up we go. This is hard, I know. Okay. Now, let's come back here this way a little bit. Hold it against these wires, and when you pull it up, it's going to want to go that way, okay? And that's the way we want it to go. Okay. This is the guy wire for over there, so lift this up over it. Over it, yeah. And then let's going up, sorry, didn't mean to hit you there, okay, I'm going to have to take the pressure off of it, okay. there we go, one more, lean it against those wires, it should go up, sorry, all the way. Take the swing the one way. There we go. Okay, no, 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 no. No, no. Let it down. See that all underneath me? I think. I got you in your stomach. That's fine. I'm sorry. Can I raise it a little bit? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Okay, you can just leave it right there. Now. Now, from a distance, does that look level? There we are. Okay, so we're using the same coax we use for all our experimental antennas. It's going up to the cobweb, which is all set up. It should work on 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Um, <clears throat> let's go see if it does that. So we have the antenna up. We have the cable connected. And we're going to put an SWR meter down here in the bottom and just kind of look at how it tunes out of the box um, and see what kind of changes we might want to make um, if we wanted to take the antenna up and down. I can tell you from having put it up that it's heavy. It's heavy. We repositioned the guy ropes because they weren't exactly in the triangle. Um, and I think it'll stay up just fine. Getting it up, we nearly lost it falling over, even though there were three of us. And uh, Callum has a nice big red mark on his stomach where the mast hit him. So there are good solid reasons for having assistance when you put these things up. So let's uh, take a look at our meter here. This um, is, uh, let's see, it's home. Okay, this is a rig expert. AA230 zoom. By the way, this thing is made in the Ukraine. Okay, so um, we're going to go to, oops, I'm going to do it with two fingers. Um, 40 meters, three. Okay, and then we're going to do an SWR chart and we'll kick it off. 
Now this starts out at 5 at the low part of 40 meters here, but very quickly dives down, hits a dip, and then goes back up again. That's just 1.5 SWR. Let's take a look at some of the underlying data. We see that the resistance at 7150 is actually 34 ohms. It's not 50. Okay, so that's why the SWR cannot get better than that. However, using an antenna tuner like the antenna tuner in your radio will do a very good job on that. Now note that that minimum is very close to the FT8 range. When you get up over here into the upper part of the general band, it starts to get a little high. I don't think there's much you can do about this except use an antenna tuner uh, because the dip is already in the band. By making the antenna longer or shorter, it would put it somewhere else in the band, but the curve would not look any different. Okay, now let's try it on 30. So we'll go to 30 meters, which is 4, and uh, let it go. Okay, 30 meters is a CW, and you can do um, FT8 and things like that on there. Okay, now notice how the minimum is up here at 1.170. Okay, the band goes from 10.1 .1 to 10.15. And this is in, the thing across the entire band is okay. If you want to move that dip down over to where the, FT8 frequencies are, you can by making a minor adjustment. Again, let's look at the data. The resistance is 40 ohms. Now with 40 instead of 50, you're not going to get um, a 1.0 SWR, but your tuner can fix that. And a tuner inside your radio that can handle up to the 3 to 1 will do fine on 30 meters. Let's check out the workhorse band, which is 20. And that is five. Okay, we'll let it rip. Okay, now it's coming into the band at three. And it's going to come down sharply. Okay, and start up again just down here. Now this up here means the antenna is too short. Now on each of the elements there is at the end of the element a little piece of wire with the thing kind of tied back like that okay and there's another one over here on the other side and you need to lengthen that out like this so that it's longer and that will push that minimum down the band and you can put it wherever you want in the middle of the band FT8 uh, whatever but it can it has the capability of uh, touching um, uh, catching most of the band at uh, less than two to one and if not uh, you can tune it fairly easily because it'll be under three to one as it stands right now out of the box that element is just a little too short, but as I said, they've got the thing that you can fix uh, built right into the antenna. Okay, so that's 20. Let's go to 17, 6, and let it rip. Oops. Oh, this is looking very good. Under 1.5 to 1 at the start of the band down to 1.2, under 1.2, and up across. If we look at the data, we see that it's 41 ohms. Okay, so that's very close to 50. So your SWR is going to be, you, you're never going to get it to 1.0 unless you use the tuner, okay? But you can use it without a tuner just fine the way it stands. Okay, that's 17 meters, so now let's look at um, 15, and 15 is 7, 
and 15 is a wide band. We'll let her rip. This is good. We're starting out at under two, uh, going down through the band, and it is actually bottoming out at uh, 2 1.285. Okay, now much of the sideband work is down here a little lower. Of course, all the digital work is down here. But the antenna, as it stands, can be used for that with the tuner that's in your radio. Okay, so that's 15. Let's try 17. Uh, no, 12, which is 8. Let her rip. Yeah, this is coming in at 3. It's going to come down below three, but it's still you got to use a tuner. And up at the top of the band, we see that the antenna is too short on this frequency. The actual midpoint there is in somewhere up above it, so the antenna is too short. Again, use that trick with this uh, to lengthen the antenna and move that back in there. I think if I were to use this as a general purpose antenna, I would make that change. Okay, and so that leaves us with 10 or 9. And we're going to let it rip. It's pretty high on the bottom of the band. We note that most of the activity, the technician activity is down here. Much of the single sideband activity is down here. This is way high. Again, the element is too short. So you do this kind of thing with it to move that down here. If we look at the data, 80 ohms, okay. But that's not right there. It's in the middle, which is why we get the 2 to 1 SWR. Now, if that was, see, we've got an X factor here. We've got a reactive factor. If that were 0X and 100R, 100 ohms, for the resistance, that'd be a 2 to 1 SWR. So it's less there, but we do have some reactants. And 88.6 is the effective um, absolute value of the resistance. Okay, so there we have it. So the bottom line here is that the antenna is working well from an SWR point of view. We got the thing up. Um, now, the next step is to check how well it hears uh, compared to my vertical and my hex beam. Uh, get some comparison testing in there. And then the next step after that is to get on the air with it and give it a try. It looks like a very interesting antenna. Again, 73antennas.com. It comes out of Australia, although they ship out of the United States. So check it out. Uh, and you've got another video coming up, which will be the actual performance of the antenna on the air. I anticipate it will perform about the same way a dipole does, maybe... Um, a little bit of a compromise because it is wrapped into a square, but we'll see. We'll see shortly. Please check out decastlercom support for various ways that you can help fund this channel. Also, please check out decastlercom giveaway. Uh, we give away something every month and you can find out what it is there, how to enter. And again, it is free. You don't have to pay postage for me to ship it to you. There's no taxes to worry about. It's free, free, free. The only thing you have to pay is for the stamp to get your entry to me. Uh, it's done all by snail mail. And please subscribe, click like, and until we next meet, 73.